Iceland encourages the locals to throw baby puffins off the cliffs. Nashville, Tennessee residents are seeking help for a man who's missing half his head. And an eight-year-old was found driving a car to Target in Ohio. These are the weird stories for Wednesday on Weird AF News. Go! Iceland is asking the local citizens to help them throw baby puffins off of cliffs. For residents of Vestmanaija, which is an island located just off the southern coast of Iceland, puffling season is a special time of year. The people of the island flock to the cliff sides with baby puffins in their hands, eager to chuck them off the side of a cliff. Oh, this sounds like a lovely time. I'd like to throw down a few brewskis and help throw the puffins off cliffs knowing that um, I'm helping nature. I'm wondering, do you have to gently toss them off the cliff, or can you just wind up and hurl them like a four-seam fastball? It says here, once baby puffins, called pufflings, reach maturity, they fly from their colony and spend several years at sea before eventually returning to land in order to breed. Residing in cliffside nests, these pufflings use the light of the moon to guide them out to the ocean. However, due to increased building development on the island's coastlines, some of the baby puffins get lost and they head the wrong way. They get confused, um, mistaking human-made streetlights with moonlight, which is how they guide themselves to the cliffside. Well, you know, a a real hero would just shoot out all those streetlights when the puffins emerge from their eggs during the puffling season. But this is another way to do it. It says, during puffling season, it's normal to find baby puffins scattered all across town, hiding in alleys, in crevices, in corners. This is when the, quote, puffling patrol is put to work. Residents, old and young, head out into the night, armed with gloved hands, holding flashlights and cardboard boxes, poked with holes, ready to snatch up any baby puffins they come across. Now, since patrolling is more effective In the nighttime, those locals who catch baby puffins head home and keep the pufflings overnight in roomy cardboard boxes. In the morning, the patrollers head out to the cliff sides, and with an underhand technique, the baby puffins are launched off the cliff and towards the ocean. While you technically can just set them down on the edge and wait for them to take off by themselves, locals believe that giving them a little helpful toss encourages them to fly out Right away. Fly away! Fly! Be free! My pufflings! Is it pufflings? I think it's pufflings. Now, it's important to be very clear with instructions. You're supposed to catch baby puffins and throw them gently off the cliff. Not puffer fish. And also, don't throw puffy babies off the cliff either. No one enjoys having their puffy, chubby baby tossed off a cliff, I would assume. Also, it's important to note that this uh, this does not work with non-flying animals, I learned. In, in my defense, I thought turkeys could fly. Turns out, no, no, they cannot fly. So stick to the pufflings. Now, the article goes on to say patrollers, which consist of some as young as four years old and as old as 90, are encouraged to age the scientists in collecting data, often logging the weight of their baby puffin on a dedicated website. During the season, you can expect to see the cliff sides packed with people lined up shoulder to shoulder, preparing their pufflings for their first big journey. For many, this is regarded as a generational tradition. And for those of you curious individuals listening to this show who might be interested in what puffling patrolling looks like, tourists are actually welcome to visit Vestmanaja. Vestmanaja? Vestmanaja. Uh, They encourage you to visit during the season. However... While it's not illegal for foreigners to participate, it's highly encouraged to leave the rescuing up to the locals and to just watch the baby puffin tossing from the sidelines. Just make sure to cheer them up and celebrate the beginning of these birds' beautiful journeys to the sea. Well, I tell you right now, I would love to see this as a tourist. I mean, of course, I'm going to want to participate. Um, Anyone live in Vesmajaya that listens to this podcast that can put me up? At some point, maybe we we can plan this out, man. I would love to, I would love to just go out there into the world. If I had a budget, I would do this. I would just go to these weird events and 
cover them for the show and participate as often as I could. I think life's, this is what life's all about, adventures like this. And for me, adventures into the world of the weird just mean everything to me. Just remember it's weird news and it'll be all right. Beep. Nashville, Tennessee residents are desperately seeking help for a man who's missing half his head and walking around. Of course, you never know what you're going to see walking down Broadway these days, but folks in downtown Nashville definitely weren't expecting to see a man missing half his head, and it's got the locals very concerned for him. You know, I mean, strolling around town with no head, I and mean, that's not a good idea. This guy's obviously not in his right mind. But credit to him, he's keeping an open mind about life in general, and that's not easy to do. Turns out over the past few days, numerous posts have popped up on social media from the Nashville residents who were alarmed when they spotted a man strolling around downtown Nashville with part of his head missing. So they're really looking for this guy right now, and it's uh, they need all the help they can get. They're searching for him because he's desperately needed for a vote on the House floor because, you know, these politicians are missing half their skull, many of them. Now, there are photos and video of this individual that have been posted online, and I wouldn't recommend anyone taking a peep at these videos uh, because I can speak from first-hand experience that seeing an exposed brain is one thing. Seeing a man scratch his own brain, that's something else shocking altogether. I can't unsee that, so I don't recommend you doing that. Now, there's a little bit of a backstory here as to why this man's suddenly finding himself on the street here. He reportedly checked himself out of a hospital because they wouldn't allow him to smoke, which is very odd. Uh, It seems that at this particular hospital, uh, the non-smoking protocol is more important than a man walking around with his brain exposed in the sunlight. Now, several locals on social media have seen and interacted with the man and have confirmed that they have even called 911 for help, and others are saying that they offered assistance and that the man declined, while others say that he's been out walking around like this for years, with some reporting seeing him as far back as 2021. Well, that seems very strange. One individual says that the hospital knows about this man and has for some time, but they say he's actually fine. I don't know. I don't know if you're fine, if you're walking around with a piece of your skull missing. I mean... The wind could blow some debris into your hole in your head. Debris? You don't want debris in your inside your brain, I don't think. Plus, bugs can get in there, I'd imagine. The article goes on to say, either way, this is a pretty sad situation in Nashville and one that's alarming. And there's quite a few people in the area who are desperate to get this man some help. Well, he couldn't be that hard to spot. I suppose that... Uh, Convincing him to get some help could be problematic. This is the state of affairs in the U.S. of A., though. We have very little support for the mentally ill and very little support for the poor with no you know, medical benefits or anything of the sort. So you got people with uh, missing a skull just wandering around our streets. That's just how it is. I wonder how long before the, the MAGA... Start posting about immigrants eating Americans' brains on the streets of Nashville. LOL. (laughs) An eight-year-old girl drove an SUV on a solo target run. Well, when you need crayons, guys, you need crayons. Nothing's going to stop you from getting your crayons. Now, she probably was uh, headed to Starbucks. You know, I tell you, when they released that pumpkin spice latte... People go bananas. And it's pumpkin spice latte season, guys. It's begun. The story is out of Bedford, Ohio. An eight-year-old girl took an SUV from her Ohio home and drove for miles and miles to a store where she was later found unharmed. The girl, whose name has not been released, and the vehicle, a 2020 Nissan Rogue, were reported missing around 9 a.m. on Sunday. Family members say that they had last seen the girl at the residence about two hours earlier. The police launched an investigation and learned that a small child had been spotted driving a vehicle on a nearby road, but that vehicle could not be located. The SUV eventually was found a short time later in the parking lot of a Target store, which is about 13 miles from her home. Wow, very impressive. She drove 13 miles. Did she use GPS? Did she just remember how to get to the Target? 
sounds to me like this is a brilliant young child. And perhaps we need to just raise the driving age to eight years old, guys. I mean, it seems like anybody could do it, right? I know I was pretty good at driving at eight. I mean, I was cruising around on my big wheel for sure. Anybody else have a big wheel back in the day? Please hit me up and let me know. Anybody want to get together and uh, race big wheels down a steep hill? I'm, I'm down for that, man. I want to relive my childhood right now. Okay, thankfully the police found the child by herself inside the Target. She told the officers that she had struck a mailbox while driving, but nothing else. Oh, I love her honesty. <laughs> She's a, I, I hit a mailbox, but, um, you know, luckily I didn't run over uh, any crossing guards or pedestrians at all. Just, just one mailbox. That's amazing. She just hit one mailbox. This has got to be the best driver in Ohio, I think. I'm going to guess she probably even used her turn signals. Um, Now, the authorities did not say why she had decided to travel to the store or provide further details about the the trip. Uh, Yeah, I'd love to know what she needed at Target so badly. So badly. Although, do any of us really need anything from Target? We sort of just go to Target and then somehow we just leave with a bunch of stuff. This article ends by saying this young girl is too young to be charged criminally. And it wasn't clear if any charges would be filed. I mean, who's who's filing charges here? She didn't hurt anybody. Uh, The parents, if anybody, should be charged for negligence on some level, I'd imagine. Although it's got to be hard to keep your eye on your kids. This is why I know better. I've decided to uh, have the vasectomy, not have any kids, because I know, I know, I'm... I'm easily distracted. And when you have a bunch of ninos running around, you cannot be easily distracted. I live inside my head most of my life. You know, I can't I can't keep an eye on kids too. I know better. My kid would break free and take my Honda Civic for a spin and I wouldn't know for two days probably. Now, I guess the good thing about this is uh, the girl was found safely and no one was harmed. I just went and found the video footage released by the police from their vehicle kind of following the Nissan down the road and it's swerving <laughs> it's swerving all over the place the police kind of allow it to swerve for a few miles I, I was wondering when I was watching the video like why they didn't pull it over sooner I mean this thing's like yeah yeah very concerning and it's just like the police were amused or something very odd behavior by the police in my opinion And I think at the end of the day, Nissan ought to be very proud that uh, this child was able to drive their vehicle for 13 miles without, we assume, prior training. It could be a new slogan for them. Nissan Rogue. Even a child can drive it. Hello. Is it weird you're looking for? Hey everybody, it's your boy Jonesy here. I want to thank you for spending some time with me in the weird news. I want to give a shout out and give thanks to someone who bought me a coffee. It's Hugh Jars. Hugh Jars bought me a coffee. It's a strange name, Hugh Jars. Um, But people got weird names out there. A lot of my listeners got weird names like Hugh Jars. Hugh Jars wrote, Hey mate, your favorite Aussie is back. I've been getting things sorted out, looking after my mental health. Oh, that's very good. You should look after your mental health. I have a lot to catch up on from your show, Jonesy. This breakup with the not-so-better half had me losing faith in everything. Now I have found that not all people are really bad. I missed your show and think about you a lot. I miss Connie's accent, Tim Tam Cherry Ripe. I hope old mate from Ohio is going well. I assume he's talking about Jim. Sorry I could only afford one coffee, Jonesy. Uh, But I have only listened to John Bon Jovi episode and remembered what I was missing, Axl Rose. Uh, I will try to get back in the Patreon when I can afford it. I might annoy you on Instagram now that I'm on there, but I first have to work out how to use the damn thing. Don't judge, but I reached out to God again. I'm not Catholic, but my religion did allow my dad as an elder. Well, it's a fascinating message. It goes deep. It goes deep. Huge arse. Finding God. I, I would never judge somebody that reached out to God. I think God is great to have in your life. It's just certain... It's... uh. You know, it's the certain relationship that you have with God is is what's important. Uh, you know, that's all that it ma- that's all that matters. You know, I have a relationship with my own God. I, I really do. I have. You think you might think Jonesy ain't ain't religious, and I, I wouldn't even call it religious because I think um, the word religion uh, inherent in that 
could be organized religion involving institutions. And those are really third parties that get in the way between you and your God. And they oftentimes convince you uh, to do things that could be, let's just say, xenophobic on the horrible level. And on a little mundane level, they could convince you to just hand over your your hard-earned money. And and I don't think any of those things should be part of... uh, of the God experience. So instead of that, I, I instead of religion, I just say spirituality. So I, I'm I am a spiritual person, but in my own way, I have a relationship with a higher power. I would call it, and um, and it's private, and and I do that, and it helps me. So I would never begrudge anybody for reaching out to God ever. Uh, so no need to uh, apologize for anything like that. I hope you get through the uh, the breakup. I know those are very very difficult and uh, and if my podcast re- you know provides any relief for anybody in in, a, in times of of distress and uh, you know mental health things, let's just say, then I, you know I'm I'm so happy to to be there for you for for everybody, you, you know. So I'm I'm very happy. That's one of the things that my podcast can do is re- provide some some relief to people that are going through hard stuff. Um, if if you all recall, uh, during COVID, um, a lot of people were listening to the show daily and I was getting a lot of nice messages and I was so pleased to be able to provide some relief during a hard time for us all. So, yeah, I'm here for you all, um, and especially for huge R's. Yeah, <laughs> huge R's. Anyways, if you guys want to buy me a coffee like Hugh Jars did, just go to weirdafnews.com and you can click on Buy Jonesy a Coffee and you can write me a lovely note. You can also join the Patreon. The Patreon's pretty cool. And uh, that's where you uh, you buy Jonesy a Coffee every month and you get access to additional Weird AF content and personal content from Jonesy. For instance, last night I posted a little photo dump of my little trip to San Francisco the past week, so that's pretty cool. I put a lot of stuff in the Patreon like that, just to... I just pepper it with personal things here and there just to, you know, keep my patrons entertained as best I can. So go to Weird AF News or patreon.com slash Weird AF News. If you want to email me, it's funnyjones at weird AF, I'm sorry, funnyjones at gmail.com, funnyjones at gmail.com. And my Instagram is at funnyjones. You can always call the show as well, 646-450-2012. Have a good night. Have a good morning. Have a good day. And good luck with your life, man.